Hello everybody, Lisa Strickland here, your autoimmune health coach. How are you today? So today I am talking about pain and food. Now, you know, is it connected? Now, most people, you know, food, for most people, food is such a major part of their life, you know. It is something that we go to when we're feeling down, when we're feeling stressed, and we look for food and in regards to, you know, being, comf being comforted and, you know, making ourselves feel good, feel sated, feel, you know, all those really good things that, um, that when you have something that you really enjoy, um, you know, food can really be part of making you feel good about yourself. But, you know, and, and it really does provide us with, you know, it sustains our life. Let's face it, you know, it, it is the thing that keeps us going. So, you know, with our water, our food is what keeps us strong, keeps us healthy, you know, and provides us with everything we need to live our lives. But, you know, when, think about, you know, the different times, because a lot of people do not relate food and pain together um, including you know a lot of the medical profession and um, you know this is going to be um, I, I am going to be a, a little bit controversial because I will go out there and say that you know in a lot of cases we go to the doctor and I've had the same experience okay and that is that when we have arthritis pain we have anything they give us you know pain medication and no one usually talks about food at all when it comes to food and pain but think about the times that they do so if you walk into the doctor and you say I'm just feeling really tired or you know I, I need to get a blood test and those results come back and you have an iron deficiency what do doctors tell you to do so one of the first things I'll say to you is that we will check this out in you know a few a few weeks or a month now, what I want you to do is to go away and I want you to make sure that you raise the amount of meat you're eating and, you know, any, anything else, lots of greens and, you know, see how you go. Now, um, there you go. You know, you're actually putting food in with the fact that you have an iron deficiency. You have an iron deficiency because you're not eating enough foods that have iron in them. The other thing they talk about is cholesterol. Now, when you have high cholesterol, your doctor will, you know, say to you, you need to reduce certain things in your diet, like your dairy, um, lots of fats and those sort of things. So they're relating, you know, all these different things like cholesterol and iron to food, but no one actually talks about food and pain. Okay, people, people straight away just reach for a tablet or the doctor will prescribe you with a tablet, but no one actually thinks about it. So really, you know, um, thinking about how, you know, there is that correlate, how we can do something about it. And that there is a major correlation between the pain that we feel and some of us on a daily basis when we're dealing with autoimmune issues to the point where it gets us very down. And our food, you know, it just goes hand in hand. It's really important to understand that. So, you know, I've, I've actually experienced that myself personally and my clients experience it as well because once they come onto programs with me, they notice within a few weeks that change. And it's really, really important that we understand what we put in our mouth is what is going to relate to our pain. You know, we relate it to our iron levels, we relate it to our cholesterol, it's related to all of those different things, but never actually discussed when we're looking at pain. And certain foods can really flare us up and cause inflammation in our bodies. So it's really, you know, looking at those certain foods that are, that are out there that we can understand, you know, what is flaring our systems up. Now, if you're out there, please give me the love and likes. I love to see who's on and who's about. So, you know, some foods can even make us worse, okay? It can give us a, a really pronounced feeling of pain. 
So, you know, really understanding what, what foods are going to impact our bodies from a pain perspective is actually really important. And, you know, understanding how we can actually get past that and really start to improve our lives in regards to understanding, you know, what is causing um, our pain from a food perspective. You know, food is, impacts our life in so many different ways. It improves, um, it imp- impacts our moods, you know, our sense of, and it also impacts our sensitivity to pain. So really think about, you know, um, for women when we menstruate, the one thing that has been found to really um, cause a lot of pain is dairy products. You know, it, it really is quite a trigger for those things. And if you um, have that experience, then try cutting out dairy out of your diet and you will see a pronounced difference. So it's really important to understand that it, it can be such a trigger, your food, in your life. It is what sustains us. It is what keeps us healthy. So, of course, it's going to be related to the pain that we feel. So we really need to look at that side of it. And actually, you know, if you, when you start working through things and you have um, someone to guide you through, it's not hard to understand you know, how you can make your life a lot happier and a lot and have a lot less pain in your life. So really understanding what you're eating is a big thing. Movement is another big thing as well, but that comes from reducing your pain, which we do with our food. And this is the thing, you know, there are a lot of things that rely on us not being in pain. And if we can reduce the pain that we feel through our food, then so many other things in our lives are going to fall into place. You know, you're going to be able to go out and you're going to be able to exercise because you're going to feel better. You're going to not be so emotional. You know, think about how emotional you feel at different times because you're in so much pain. We need to reduce the pain that we feel so we can live a really strong, normal, happy life. Because it really does, you know, it it is crippling when you have a lot of pain that, you know, that is caused by our autoimmune issues. So we really need to, you know, think about how we can make that better. So, you know, we don't want to be feeling helpless and be feeling in so much pain that we actually can't face what we have going on. Because it's really important for us to be strong and to take that step towards really getting ourselves in a place where we are happy and we don't need to deal with all that pain. So really thinking about, yes, Annette, yes, I agree. Yeah, dairy is, unfortunately, you know, everybody loves dairy. It's something that we really enjoy. But unfortunately, it is such a trigger for us And we need to find other things that we enjoy. You know, as I've always said, it's all about habit because we've been brought up with milk. That's just what we know. But once we change it and we get used to something else, then, you know, I, for me, giving up that side of things to be pain free, that's, you know, that, that is just, it's the pain that you feel is definitely worth getting rid of and changing to something else rather than having dairy, isn't it? So it's really something that we need to think about. And, um, you know, if you have grandchildren and those and, and, and young people that are going through, you know, um, really bad period cramps, that's one of the things that, you know, you can suggest to them that, that they can sort of back off on because it does make a tremendous difference. And I've seen it, you know, within my, my self and my children, my daughters. So, you know, really important. So, you know, think about how that correlates because I really get frustrated. Sorry. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's all about nurturing our bodies, isn't it? And looking after ourselves so we can feel great. So really, you know, think about how food impacts us because I do get very, very frustrated by the fact that people will very quickly reach for a tablet. When, and I understand because there are times and places for that as well. 
and 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 that's not no, I'm not poo pooing it completely, but what I'm saying is that you can get control of your pain and not have to take and pop those tablets all the time because it is actually quite a vicious circle because those tablets are then going to cause issues with your gut. So it's it's um it's one of those things that if we can get our pain under control so much of the rest of our life just falls into place you know it's just amazing so think about how you can look at and and really understand what you have going on with your pain and what maybe triggers it because sometimes when you're eating certain things you can look back over it and think I haven't eaten that before and, you know, I, I just felt like I was, my pain was a lot sharper. You know, your pain, it's interesting, isn't it? When I think about, like, I don't have pain anymore like I used to, you know, I don't. But when I think back over, you get different types of pain. And those different foods actually trigger different reactions in your body. You know, sometimes they can be a lot sharper. Sometimes they just throb. It's really interesting. Pain is 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 such a um, a, a curse for most of us, but we can get through that by actually understanding it so much more. So really think about how you can look at it. If um, if you want to go further, let me know. Now in the next couple of days, I'm actually going to start. We're going to have a three day. Um, program that we're going to do and it's all it's a free program and it's all going to be about comfort food that decreases pain so look out for that I'll be talking about that very soon in the next day or so and we will be going forward with that and that will assist people to really start looking at how they can help their pain yes and it's sorry and it I'll just have a look I used a lot of pain I used to have a lot of pain, but getting rid of dairy helped me. Yes. Yeah, there's quite a few different things other than dairy. Sugar is another one. So it's something that um, that is really good for you. It's great that you've actually recognized those things. So these are the things, as Annette is showing, that everybody can do and start really making ourselves aware and mindful of what's happening within our bodies because when we are under pain in a lot of pain it's you just you don't need to be there you know so look for my three-day pop-up uh, my three-day program that's coming up really soon that's going to pop up on your screen soon and you will be able to register for that and it's coming up really soon because pain is what we need to, we need to have a pain-free life it's really important and you can do it, okay? So I'll talk to you really soon. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.